for our reflection, we draw on this verse from the Gospel. Who then is the faithful and prudent servant whom the master has set in charge of his household to distribute to them their food at the proper time? Why we can't wait is Dr. Martin Luther King's memoir of the campaign to bring racial justice to Birmingham, Alabama, and the March on Washington in 1963. That was my senior year here. I remember those events very clearly. In his recounting of the events of that critical year in the Civil Rights Movement, Dr. King made this observation. Time is neutral. We use it either destructively or constructively. More and more, I feel that the people of ill will have used time more effectively than those of good will. We will have to repent in this generation, not merely for the hateful words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. Human progress never rolls in on wills of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts of men and women willing to work to be co-workers with God. And without this hard work, time becomes an ally of the forces of social stagnation. Therefore, we must use time creatively, knowing that the time is always right to do good. In today's gospel, Jesus clarifies that we, all of us here, we are stewards of the time God has given us. Like the faithful and prudent servants entrusted with responsibilities of the master's household, God has entrusted us with this life in this time and place to keep the household of God open for all. Sometimes I do videos. Today, I'm going to use your words. This past school year, for Black History Month, several of your inclusive, inclusivity and diversity essays appeared in the Tribune Democrat. In your writing, you wrote about belonging in a community, becoming a more self-actualized person, developing beliefs to guide your life, and learning to look beyond the present, to take time to imagine and to build a better world. As Dr. King discovered, God gives us time to use creatively, to do what is right and just, to do the work of God. Here is what you said about doing the right and just work of God. Haley Bear and Zach Jaystrap wrote, by including everyone's culture, differences, and backgrounds, we can create a place to feel welcome and do our best possible work. Our abilities to listen, communicate, and solve problems will allow us to conquer any possible obstacles we may encounter. Joseph Grinzer, Kevin Lynch, Jill Birkerbau and Brady Dolgus developed this insight. An inclusive culture enables people to learn different perspectives and generates more creativity and opportunities. This inclusive diversity means that when people feel accepted, we work harder because of our safe environment. We benefit by accepting new experiences, 
inviting opportunities and allowing ourselves to grow by gaining a new perspective. Inclusive diversity allows a group to have inputs and ideas that come from multiple points of view. It is easy to do something from one perspective, but it is better to include the thoughts of other people's perspectives. Jillian Rittenauer, Melissa Saul Iremos, and Logan Hepner highlighted beyonding, belonging, becoming, saying, when you look into the eyes of one another, we see we should notice their being and their presence. We should not observe what they are or look like, but who they are and why they are here. The color of someone's skin is not the color of their soul. Being unable to look past this bias can build a wall between opportunities for friendship and destroy a bond that could have been. Learning about differences would help everyone understand one another and open up communication, resulting in them recognizing their similarities. Everyone wants to feel included and heard when walking into a room. If someone is sitting in a class and sees the person next to them, they should not judge them by appearance, but by personality. If we want to get to know someone else, we should talk to them about everyday things that exist between us. Finally, Kira Ogletree, again Brady Dolgas, and Cami Bepler offered this challenge to use our time creatively. Although the world we live in is far from perfect, if each one does our part to include each other and stomp out negativity, that circles throughout our words and our actions, then together we can create a better tomorrow. The best part about spreading inclusive culture is everyone can do it. No matter how young or old someone is, they possess the power to spread inclusive culture. Everyone can work together to make the world a better place. We believe that all individuals can make a difference and inspire change. It would help if we had the mindset that I need to be accountable for my actions and change needs to start with me. Embrace the challenge of influencing change. We are Jesus' stewards. When God, the master of the house, returns and asks us for an accounting of our time, what return will we be able to make? Belonging, becoming, believing, beyonding, call for our fostering and encouraging a spirit of unity within our diverse community. Again, from your essays, it all starts within us. If I am not showing why our school and town culture should be inclusive, then why am I telling someone else how to act? How am I positively living inclusive diversity for me and with others? McCord students and faculty must be catalysts. We must be the place of encounter and convergence of diversity and inclusion with the objective of shaping each of us to know how to love with fidelity to live life as a response to God's call and to creatively use the present and future to do the righteous and just work of God as a service to society. We close with this short prayer. 
Lord Jesus, may we embrace your spirit of humble servanthood and the responsibilities entrusted to us for the good of our McCord family and the community beyond it. In the light of your word, help us to imitate the generosity of your inclusive heart during this time you have given us as we journey to your Father's dwelling place. <laughs>